It's fine. I don't know what the fuck. What did we do to you? What did we do? Dude, we're talking about. Why don't you like us? This will be an interesting episode, I think. Yeah, yeah, it will. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, are you ready to do this, man? I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. To I literally, we, we literally just did the best opening for it, and you just ignored it and said, "Are you ready to do uh, this?" Sorry. sorry. <laughs> It's a show by Chris and Neil with all great movies. They are the real deal. We watch them all so you don't have to. It's movies that don't suck and some that do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all ages, welcome to a new episode of Movies That Don't Suck and Some Do. My name's Neil. And I'm Chris. And today we are going to be reviewing two, count them, two movies that are out there for your viewing pleasure in the world. Now, first, we are going to be doing a movie that is out there, the Netflixy world. Top, actually, it's the top um, one streaming movie in the in the world right now. Really? Yeah. All right. So anyway, it's the top watched movie in the I think it's only because it has one guy in it, and that's the funny man himself, Adam Sandler. So Spaceman featuring... Adam Sandler. I hope you're glad with what you've done to me. I lay in bed all day long feeling melancholy. You left me here all alone, tears running constantly. Oh, somebody kill me, please. Yeah, that's on the wedding singer, which is a great song, by the way. Like his voice gets all cracky thing, he's screaming it. Sounds awesome. I actually like that song a lot. Yeah, it actually it sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah. I went through like you know how many you know how many freaking things I went through of Adam Sandler to figure out um which one to do. To to today, Junior, you wouldn't do that one, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like uh, uh also in this movie, Carrie Mulligan. You have no idea how boring everything was before I met you. Action is character, our English teacher says. I think it means that if we never did anything, we wouldn't be anybody. And I never did anything before I met you. And sometimes I think no one's ever done anything in this whole stupid country, apart from you. That's from an education. She's done to be her speeder stars are in that scene. And it's a great movie. Right. It's yeah, education. and uh, I mean that's why I picked it because it's her worth the scars guard, and uh, also well, sorry, on top of that, it's just sorry. That's why I said scars guard. But anyway, <laughs> um, and plus we have uh, Carrie's been everywhere lately, and we have literally used all her fucking clips to death. Yeah, sorry. We have we, we've we've done every fucking movie. Well, I, I do want to mention this movie has did. three Oscar nominees in this one. Came always done. Oh. Uh, the next one must be. Uh, Connell Noir. <laughs> Where did my life go, Penny? <laughs> One day I'm a carefree bachelor, and the next I'm married and driving a minivan to Pee Wee cricket matches in suburban New Delhi. Are you talking to me? Is there another Penny here? <laughs> I had such plans. I had dreams. I was going to be the Indira Gandhi of particle astrophysics. But with a penis, of course. <laughs> Amazing. Ever since I was a little boy, my father wanted me to be a gynecologist like him. How can I be a gynecologist? I can barely look a woman in the eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's from uh, Big, Big, Big Bang Theory. And he's not not your Oscar yet. So. He, he's got like 10 Oscars. And Paul Dano. Paul Dano. Daniel. You've come here, and you've brought good and wealth, but you have also brought your bad habits as a backslider. You've lusted after women, and you have abandoned your child. Your child that you raised, you have abandoned all because he was sick, and you have sinned. So say it now. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Say it louder. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Louder, Daniel. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. 
That's from probably my top favorite movie of all time, but it'll be Blood. Yeah, that's the movie about your family when they, like, try to kill all those people in Texas, right? That's not it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Is it, your family's part of the oil people, right? Uh, no, why would you think that? Uh, because they're from Texas? No, no, they're from Wisconsin. No, no, you live in Texas. Well, they live in Texas. I'm pretty but, sure of it. I know, but I guess where you went picked your was... brother up from. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we lived there. But... If you live in Texas, you killed people to get that land, right? I don't know. Actually, I don't think that's the case at all. Yeah, that's, I think that's exactly the case for everybody in Texas. You know, I don't know. know. I don't know if you're trying to make it like my family's. Okay. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know that. I'm not that stupid, guys. Um, but like, literally, yeah, Paul, Paul yes, there will be blood. There will be blood is one of the best movies of all time. I'll put it. I'll put it in the top hundred. Um, also, the next movie we're doing is, of course, the big movie of the week, big the one movie. everybody's been talking about. Everybody and their brother, their sister, their <laughs> cousin, their Bob, Billy Bob. And you also me nine clips for this thing. <laughs> uh, the people have had sex with the popcorn bucket, yeah. but like literally, oh, you it can't, is the you can't thing. get anymore. You can't get anymore. Like, what they're they're out, can't, they're out, they're out, and that's it. The one, the only, yes, it's Spice World. No, it's it's not. You're close though. I mean, I do like oh, the, it's a world full of spice. Yeah. It's Doom Two. Well, not that, not that one. That's that's oh, not the video game. No, that's the video yeah, game. Yeah. Didn't it? But you know how many cool posters they have for this, though? Yeah. Like, literally, here, here's the one I used for yeah. our advertisement for yeah. Doom 2, right? Yeah. And then here, here's an, the IMAX one. Yeah. Yeah. And then the character ones are just ridiculous. Look at these. These are some of the best poster work I have ever seen in all of Posterage. Mm-hmm. 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 Like, but Doom 2 is the movie we're talking about. First, none other, the one and only, and guess what? On Jimmy Kimmel this past week, they all realized for the first time, everybody has been saying his name wrong the entire time so how do you say he's it? in existence. How do, you say well, how do you think they pronounce it? Uh, Timothy Chalamet. It is not Timothy. What is it? It's Timothy. Timothy. That's what the oh, the long A-E over it is. Timothy. Okay. <laughs> No, no, no! It's not Tomothy. It's Tomate. 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 Okay. Wow. Tomate Clemet. But he's okay with you call him Tim, Timmy, Timothy. He goes, you can call me Joe. I don't give a damn. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. like but the way everybody has always pronounced it, Timothy Schimmel. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you a brand new contraption of my creation, an innovation in laundrification. Scrub, scrub. Let me ask you a question. How does Tittles want to spend all his time chasing after Milner? And what do I have to do all day? Hello, scrubbers, please. Scrub, scrub. But now, with Willy Wonka's wild and wonderful wishy-washy Wonka Walker, please don't make me say that again, Tittles gets to run, and I can have fun. Scrub, scrub. scrub. Just popping out for a bit. I'll be back before roll call. Until then, Tittles has agreed to Scrub, scrub. That is from Bonka, a movie that we actually really loved from last year. Yeah, really loved. And yeah. it'll be out tomorrow if you, well, I mean, if you're watching us live right now. Uh, but uh, so tomorrow is uh, March 8th. It will be available on HBO Max. They were showing it'll you on the plane. Yeah, I had to even watch it. I can't wait. It keeps on it keeps on popping up, and I'm like, yeah! Oh, yeah. Fuck. But the thing is, tomorrow is the same day that WWE 2K24 mm. pops up, okay, and so. I've already bought it. I already bought the pre-order. That's your whole thing. So yeah. as soon as it goes live, <laughs> I'll, I'm going to get home tired as fuck tomorrow, and I'm going to be like, ah. And then on Saturday, I'll be so tired. I'll be like, I stayed up all night making my character. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Also in Dune, the lovely, always good. I don't, I don't think she's been in one bad thing yet, and that's just my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. The one and only Zendaya. Wait, this one's good. Some suggest that Parker's powers include the male spider's ability to hypnotize females, which he used to seduce Jones Watson into his cult of personality. Stop, stop. <laughs> yes, my spider lord. Yeah, that's from Spider Man. Uh, which one? No way home. No way home. Gotcha. No way home. Yep. Uh, then uh, Rebecca Ferguson's in this. I step onto that stage, and they don't want to see a woman in a thrift store dress, wondering how she's going to make rent. They want something perfect. They want to be lied to. Uh, you don't seem like you're lying. 
Well, I guess it's working. Yeah, there we go. That's that's from what? That's this. Is, what is that from? That's from Reminis. Okay, Reminis. Okay. And believe me, I just wanted to get one where she. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to get one where she wasn't fighting. Because all the other clips of her were like from like the Mission Impossible movies mm-hmm. and stuff like that, yeah. and all the above. Uh, also in this movie, uh, Javar uh, Bardem. Javier Bardem. <laughs> but I didn't die. Oh no! I said, ah! I, I... Say it again. Well, I'll give you the chance to say it right. Yeah. I saw because I say in my head not to say it, and then that's why I always fuck it up. Yeah. Is because I say in my head not to say it that okay. way. And uh, here's the, yeah, here's so it's all right. Have your murder, but I didn't die. Life clung to me like a disease. And then I understood why I had survived. I needed to look in your eyes one last time. That's from Skyfall. Oh, I know. One of the best uh, yeah. Bond movies oh, ever. Oh, probably the best one. And then bit. next. Next. One of the greatest actors. One of the guys I've seen in every fucking movie since I was damn near zero. The one, the only. One of the original Goonies, Mr. Josh Corley. Yeah, something like that. I was a soldier, special forces. I bet 50 years from now we're best as buddies. 50 years from now you're very dead. Your entire generation fucked this planet into a coma. Boom! <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Planets. Next time over. Here's a spoiler alert. You're not a fucking hero. You're just an annoying clown dressed up as a sex toy. That's from Deadpool 2. I love him. I can't wait for Deadpool 3. Yeah, oh, my God. The more that comes out about that, the more I love it. Uh, Austin Butler. You blood-sucking old vampire. You bled me dry and you still want more? I'm not an uncaring man, Mr. Presley. Don't you, Mr. Presley, me, you toad. If you are so determined to get out of our contract... You're goddamn right I want out. Well, I will personally loan you the money that you owe to Jamboree Attractions. Yeah, you still have your claws on me. You still have me working here like a goddamn slave in a salt mine. You phony, no-good piece of trash. I'll shoot you in your fat goddamn face. That's from Elvis. 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 And then the one, the only, the one pro wrestler that really took serious, the took acting serious. Yes, yes. The man himself, the guy I love more than anything in this world, Mr. Oh, did I do the wrong one? I did. Batista. Hey, Batista. So you're a pet. I suppose. People usually want cute pets. Why would you go on such a hideous one? I am hideous? You are horrifying to look at, yes. But that's a good thing. Oh? When you're ugly and someone loves you, you know they love you for who you are. Beautiful people never know who to trust. I know, I feel the same way. But, um, no, uh... Then Florence Pew, everybody. Hi. I made macaroni if you want some. I'm sorry, what? Well, I was starving and you took forever, so I wanted to make food. What do you want? Relax, Kate Bishop. I just want to talk, okay? Are you really not hungry? That fight was so long. It's really tasty, really tasty. Yeah, that, that, what is that from, Dean? Tell me. That is from Hawkeye, the yep. series Hawkeye. <laughs> and then last but not least, a surprise to me. I didn't even know the guy was in this movie. Maybe uh, back in the day we even announced it on the news segment. <laughs> but I do not even remember that he was in this movie. The one, the only. So nice that the only time you ever think about Cal Bell is because of him, Mr. Weapon of Choice himself, Christopher Walken. Okie dokie, artichokey. First of all, I know getting here was the commute from hell. I have to be a smidge off the beaten track here. Now... Ping pong, or as the Chinese say, ping pong. Sport, members and bandits alike. 
I have assembled today for your entertainment pleasure the most talented table tennis athletes from around the globe. That's from Balls of Fury. <laughs> so, um, from Balls of Fury. I, I went through, you know, I went through King in New York. I went through the speech in uh, a Pulp Fiction, the speech in True Romance. Like, I went through uh, Prophet 1, 2. Like, I went through so many of his movies trying to find the perfect. Yeah, I want to mention who else in this movie. Like, Lisa Do, Stellan Skarsgård, Charlotte Rampling, fucking, uh, a fucking, uh, oh, man, uh, it, on you too, or do we shows up for a second? Like, uh, this list goes on and on and on. And let's be honest, it's Dune. Yeah. One of the greatest, uh, novel series. It is like the only novel that I can remember that has a whole, besides, uh, Lord of the Rings, that has a whole dictionary at the end of the novel. Yeah. I read so that. I read, Dune. I read Dune. Oh yeah, so did I. Yeah, it took why, I, mean, I, I read uh, I read Dude and the Messiah too, oh, yeah. which we'll talk about that yeah, later yeah. as well. But that is the two movies that we're reviewing. Chris, tell everybody where they can find us. You can find us on the online the movies on suck that network, Facebook at Facebook.com slash movies on suck podcast or uh, X and TS Podcast on Instagram and TS Podcast. Oh, excuse me. We're also at W2Mnet.com. That's W number two M is movies net.com. You can find us there. Well, a bunch of other cool podcasts. Uh, check out uh, our friend, um, our friend Mark's podcast there. Also, uh, you can also uh, find us on Patreon, patreon.com. Just me don't suck. We're also on Bonfire. You have Bonfire account, so you don't suck on something to do. You'll find our shirts there, all the bunch of stuff that Neil's uh, showing off right now. Right now, there's a bunch of stuff in there you can buy. Uh, pretty cool shirts. Also, uh, if you was to us on Facebook, that page is on Facebook or that page. In fact, if you're listening to us on a little device right now, go ahead and sit subscribe. So whenever the podcast is ready for you, it'll just be I'm not going to do the thing at all. You know, uh, who are we talking about today? Today. Chris, I got to tell you about something, bro. Last night, I got a call from one of the greatest dudes I ever met in my entire existence on this planet Earth. What's his name? You know him. I know him. We all know him. We've talked about him on this show. In fact, he is in half of our advertisement stuff. Like, if I literally do this right now, you can see him half naked There's in the Topher corner of your yeah. screen. There's Topher right there. <laughs> so my buddy Topher, he even begged me last night. He was like, hey, man, I know you're doing your podcast tomorrow. You got to advertise my new business. Of course. Are you ready for this? What do you think Topher has been working on hiddenly for this whole fucking time? I mean, from the pub, from the photo you showed me, it looks like porno, but what is he actually working on? Now, well, that's that's from from like two years ago, dude. Okay. But um, no, dude, are you ready for this? Uh-huh. Topher now has a mobile pizza place. Nice. It's called Tutu's Pizza. It is located at 713 and a half South Sheridan. It is in a trailer Mm -hmm. and stuff that that he has built himself. Like, look at this, dude. Uh, Let me see if I got a good picture of the inside of it. Uh, I don't know how much of the inside you can see of it, but that he (laughs) built that inside of that trailer. That's awesome. There's Topher himself. He makes his own crust, his own sauce. He's going to be grounding his own sausage, all that stuff. Dude, the sauce was so good i just wanted to eat it with a fucking straw man <laughs> like seriously i was just like damn dude i can't wait to go when i go down there and um and uh so like yeah so these pizzas he makes they're like just little personals but they're they're wool they're uh they're um wood stove yeah yeah yeah, pizzas. yeah. yeah wood fire. like he makes them himself like right uh Gosh, that is not the picture I wanted to upload, but I guess I don't have any more room on here, so never mind. <laughs> but like, he put pineapple on one just to piss people off. But the, uh, the sauce, the sauce literally has a uh, Thai basil in it. Yeah, that fresh Thai basil. Oh, amazing, yeah. dude! <laughs> and uh, it's going to be cheap and stuff. But the thing is, he hasn't even opened yet. He hasn't even opened oh, wow. yet. But the way to find out when he's going to open, guys, and where he's going to be at. And he already has a thousand followers on his <laughs> on his business website. Yeah. Is all you have to do is go to two T W O two's pie house. Yes, that's two two's pie house. You can uh, look him up. Two's 
T W O, the number two apostrophe S P I house on Facebook. You look him up, and there are some photos there. It's him uh, hit, shooting up the grill for the first time. Now he's just like, he's this far away. He still he has his last health inspection to be done. And believe me, the place is spotless, though it, it'll it'll pass with flying colors. And he's gonna make it live for everybody. That's where you guys can come hang out. He was giving like literally since he can't sell anything out of it yet mm-hmm. literally i was sitting there for an hour and he was just handing out free pizza to pizza people dude whoever walked up literally he's just handing them slices he's just like come on come here like he's giving to homeless people he's like hey man a homeless guy walked up he's like you want a slice and he's like yeah and he's like he's like i think that dude's homeless and i was like yeah i think he is too and so he gave him a whole pie <laughs> and i was like here you go bro and like, but still, if you get a chance, it'll be uh, the location will be at seven one three and a half South Sheridan, Tulsa, Oklahoma, right now. But it will be moving around. It is lo- it is on a trailer, so it will be at festivals and stuff like that. But it is two twos pizza or two twos pie house. Look them up. Follow the story because believe me, this is a guy whose story you're going to want to follow because I know I've already talked to him on the business side about all of it, and I already know what he's going down with. So it's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be great. That's exciting. I'm always excited for people that are trying new adventures. Mm-hmm. So You don't see a whole lot of the about- mobile pizza places either. That's not like something you see a lot of. Dude, it was really good. <laughs> yeah, that, like, he, had a, he had a good fluffy one, and yeah. that was like, you yeah. know, me, the, the Chicago guy, yeah, yeah. loves a good, you know, thick, fluffy pizza. But, man, then he busted out this other one he's been working on. Mm-hmm. Oh, all of them were great, dude. All of them were great. Yeah. And me, you know how – like, and I told him, dude, I go, if I think this sucks, I'm going to tell you it sucks. But obviously, I'm I didn't excited, because man. look how excited I can't he is. To try it. <laughs> I'm always excited for my buddies yeah. to, you know, make money and do what they do. I can't wait. But, Chris, it's time to talk about Spider Man. Well, no, actually, Space Man, but you're close. <laughs> you're close. Oh, yeah, whatever. Um, Very close. Well, this is a Spider Man. Uh, this is um, Space Man, uh, directed by Johan Rink. He's most known for directing TV like Chernobyl and Walking Dead and Breaking Bad. But this is his uh, big feature film starring the always funny, always beautiful Adam Sandler. I hope you're glad with what you've done to me. Also, Carrie Mulgan as Linka. You have no idea how boring everything was before I met you. Uh, Kunal Nayar as Peter. Where did my life go, Penny? Also, Paul Dano plays Hanus. Daniel, you've come here and you've brought good and wealth, but you have also brought your bad habits as a backslider. Also stars Isabel Rosini and his cousin Mr. Tina. Lena Owen is Zindin Zinda. Uh, Neil, why don't you go ahead and read this whole line for Spaceman? It's a long one. Oh my God, where's that? I wasn't even looking. I was looking at loading everything up because I haven't done everything in a long time. <laughs> I forgot how to do all this stuff. I forgot how to do all this, Chris. What am I doing Sorry anymore? I don't tell you. All right. An intergalactic odyssey of love, ambition, of self-discovery. Orphaned as a boy, raised in the Czech block in countryside by his dotting grandparents, Jacob Ross has risen from a small-time scientist, become the country's first astronaut. When a dangerous solo mission to Jupiter offers him both the chance at heroism he dreamt of and a way to atone for his father's sins as a communist informer, he ventures boldly into the vast unknown. But in so doing, he leaves behind his devoted wife, Wife, Link Cup, whose love he realizes, uh, realize too late, he has sacrificed on the altar of his ambitions. Alone in deep space, Jacob discovers a possible imaginary giant alien spider who becomes his unlikely companion over philosophy. Over <laughs> conversations about the nature of love, life, and this is really long, and oh. and the deliciousness of hazelnut spread. The pair form an intense and emotional bond. Okay, so guys, uh, this is not um, uh, so we you think I'm Sandler. This is, I guess, what you call the radical. Uh, I saw a lot of shit about this online. I know a lot of people who fucking hate this. I've seen a lot of people. Hate this thing. I'm not. Well, I don't. I don't hate it. I just. I just didn't think it was. It was. It was. It was very sleepy. 
<laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. This is what I, I thought of when I was, you know, because, you know, not just when we sit, me and you sit here and talk about this. Is this the only time I'm reflecting on these movies? I have to reflect while I'm coming up with all this bullshit and facts and stuff like that that I, I have to come up with. Not bullshit, but stuff I like doing for the podcast, like these little facts that we see mm-hmm. at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, now, here is my opinion. And again, this is my opinion, people. So, like, don't bitch me out if you don't like it. All right. This was a smart movie made for dumb people. That's a good way to put it. Because they, in a smart, smart movie, where you have to kind of analyze things. Um, What's a good one? What's a good example? Like uh, Little Miss Sunshine, I guess, would be a good example. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but I'm thinking of something like that, like an artistic movie that's artistic where you have to kind of put the dots together. You have to, you got to, you got to follow the line. Yeah, this shit, you fuse it to you. This right? movie <laughs> explains the dots, the color of the dots, where the dots came from, why the dots even exist. Like literally, they ex- over explained everything in this fucking movie to the point where it was nauseous. Like I was nauseous. Now, that said, the concept of this movie, it's bananas. I love it. It's bananas. I love it. It's bananas, <laughs> but I love it. A man going mentally insane in a space station while he's trying to go to Jupiter to go to this new anomaly that appeared mm-hmm. in in space. Yeah, fucking awesome. Yeah, it's like a monster it. or something. Yeah. yeah, the first half of this movie. I was all in. I was like, all right, it's artsy, cool. And this Adam Sandler, it. Adam Sandler is a great actor. I mean, like this yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm never, ever. Um, and, Paul, I'm never, and Paul Dano's a great actor. And Carrie Mulligan's a great actor. Yeah. But there's yeah. there's something there's something that uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's hard to engage when you, when they, when the material is so, it's it's uh, there's great imagery and stuff like this, but I, I don't think it's as deep as it thinks it is. No, that's the thing. It was too. Sm- it was it was a smart movie for dumb people. Mm-hmm. It over explained everything. This movie needed to be like a half an hour shorter. Oh yeah, it was really long for for being- it was okay or, or at least twenty minutes, twenty seven yeah. minutes shorter. It needed to be because um, they were talking about stuff that they didn't really need to go over. Yeah. There was stuff in this movie that it was just kind of like, okay, I, I didn't need that information. That information doesn't mean anything to me. So why am I getting that from this big, early eyed thing just staring right at? I mean, look at it. It's just staring at you. <laughs> look at it. It's staring uh, at you. It's staring Paul at me. Dana, I did, like, now, there's not saying I didn't like this movie because I did like parts of it. I love this, the relationship between uh, between Jakob and and uh, Hanus, the spider, I really enjoyed that. That was kind of heartwarming. Even, um, yeah. But I, I again, again, I liked where it was coming from, but mm. yeah. But but like it, it did it did tell us instead of show us. You know what I mean? Which is kind of an issue. Uh, I mean. Uh, man, I didn't hate this at all. I don't want people to think I hated it, but it's definitely it, it. It it had a weird way of showing what it wanted to say, which was it, it right. Didn't, it didn't need to feed it, feed us to that the way they did, you know. Um, but I I thought the I think I thought it was yeah, pretty- and I I tried like by any means. By any means, I liked the conversation at first between the two of them. Mm-hmm. But then by the by the end of this movie, I didn't give a fuck what the hell they were saying anymore. <laughs> I, I had no cares anymore. I was at the at the end of this movie, at the point when it got to the end, like got to the point where everything happens and stuff like that, no spoilers, yeah. nothing running. But by the time it got to the end of the movie, I was like, Thank God it's fucking over. I, I didn't like I, it got to that it got to that point for me. Like <laughs> I, I it was like at the beginning of this movie, I was like, I love this. I love the concept of this. Thank you for making this. It's very good. It's very good. By the time the end of the movie came, it's pretty pretty. Yeah, visually, great movie. Everything about it, but it just got to the point where it was just like, 
man, I cannot take this anymore. I'm kind of <laughs> done. I'm, I'm a little bit over this. Like, like, where's my and, phone? I can't wait to look at it. <laughs> yeah, where's my phone? Where's my, you know, I try to put my phone away from me mm-hmm. when I'm watching movies. Yeah. Um, Sometimes but, you feel, yeah. Man, <laughs> it, it was just, this one was just, it was, this one was just a little difficult to do, bro. And I'm not gonna lie, it was just a little difficult to do. Uh, yeah, it I was, don't. Uh, it's none of the fault of the actors. The actors were great. It's just it wasn't very good. That aspect. No, it's your fault. I blame you 100 percent because I had two funny little comedies we could have watched. Both were an hour and a half. Could have just watched. Yeah, you don't watch the this. You would watch this regardless. <laughs> Number one on Netflix with with, with Adam Sandler. I think you would. And I wanted to, I wanted to stay in sort of sci-fi feel for this because this episode because. Tell me two sci-fi films. I guess it's sci-fi in the in the, in the word to say. Your mom's a sci-fi. Yeah, but um, this is yeah, this is this was a little hard. Um, I didn't hate it like like some people. Some people visually, like, visually is beautiful. Acting is fantastic. The conversation, the conversations between the two of them are great, mm-hmm. but it just got so long-winded, and nothing was happening. Like. <laughs> And this is the thing. I know it is a man dealing with his own mental illness and his own his girl, love for his and, life yeah. and stuff like that and his own grief. I got that. Yeah. Make half the fucking shuttle get blown up by a goddamn asteroid. He has to fix it at some point. You know, like, like give me a little you bit want of excitement, I guess. Yeah, just a little. You didn't have to give me much. You didn't have to give me much. Yeah. Just a little. Just enough that I'm like, all right, all right. And I love the fact that you don't know if the spider is real or not. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, I mean, like, if you ask, um, if you ask, if you ask someone like, uh, what's his face? Yes, Paul Dano. He says a part of the spider is definitely real. But yeah, some people would say it's imaginary. You know? Yeah, it's like everybody. It's got their own opinion on is it real or not. Yeah. And I'm just like, is it? Is it real or is it not real? Yeah. Who knows? What do you think, Chris? What is it real? Or is it not real? I'm gonna say it's uh, real. I'm gonna say it's real spider. That's what I, I'd like to lose a real spider. That's what I'm gonna say. I, I like the illusion. I like the fact that it, it might not be real. Yeah, yeah. And I like that. Yeah, that's, I like that fact. Yeah, I like the fact because, like, I mean, if you see that one scene where the thing, like, didn't it crawl out of his nose? Mm, I guess so. I don't know, man. Like, I, I again, of course, I don't really think it's a real, real spider, but it's, it's neat. <laughs> it's a cute spider, you know. Cute spider. Yeah. It's a cute spider. Let me look at a little cute spider. Give me a little cute spider. Yeah, cute spider. Yeah. Cute spider. Oh, it's got six eyes instead of fight eight, though. So I was wondering about that. I thought spiders have more eyes than that, but you know, it's not. It's a, it's, a, it's an alien spider. Man waiting in the dark. dark. You like anyway. to say hello, yeah, but um, uh. But uh, but it was you know it was fun, Chris. Uh, what's the rating on this? What, which what you score this? this is probably a three point two, three point three. I'm right there with you. Like at the beginning of this movie, I was really down for. It. I was like, all right, cool. It's weird. But it's over, Adam Sandler. Overstated. It's welcome. It overstated. It's welcome. <laughs> huh? Overstated. It's welcome. So, but it overstayed its welcome. It was one of those movies that I'm like, man, this, the, if they could did a little more editing, made it, maybe made it a little more exciting or cut a little more for time, yeah. maybe that would have been more of a... Uh, again, I didn't hate it, but I, just, I find it hard to recommend people. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck to recommend this movie to. You know, we watch movies, so I, th- the, I know that you and, you and I might find something interesting about it. But I don't know if I can recommend it to anyone. I don't, I don't know if I can go up to someone and say, hey, dude, guess what? Guess what's a great movie? You going to check this out, bro? Like, if I told um, Topher or Logan, two buddies that you know I have that I hang out with mm-hmm. all these all the times these days, if I told either one of these two fuckers to watch this movie, after they watch it, they'd probably punch me in the mm-hmm. face. So uh, <laughs> if anyone goes, hey, Chris, there's this Adam Sandler movie on Netflix called Space Man. Should I watch it? I'm going to be like, I don't know, <laughs> but um, all right, yeah. But I uh, actually, I'm going to give it a little bit lower. Okay. You gave it three point two. I think I'm going to go three point on this one okay. because it really. You you should know as a director or as an editor. Hey, maybe this the pace of this movie is a little. Mm. 
I mean, this is like slow burning at its slow burningness. I'm usually a slow burning guy, but this one didn't burn me either way. Yeah, it didn't. It, 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 this one, this one didn't burn and burn in your loins. This yeah. one burned when you peed. All right, man. I'm on redtomatoes.com. What's the, what's the critic score for? Or, I'm sorry. What's the audience score for Space Man? I'm gonna go 43 percent, 65 percent. Oh, they gave it higher than what I thought. Now, uh, what's the critic score for Space Man on redtomatoes.com? Oh shit. Buddy, I don't know your mom. Mm-hmm. Um, um, they're gonna give it like sixty-eight percent. You get fifty-one percent. Eighty what? Fifty-one. Oh, fifty-one. Fifty-one. And there its consistency is. Spaceman's poignant themes are probably brought to life by sensitive performances from a talented cast, but it fails to consistently engage. With its most interesting ideas, I'll read a better review. Um, mm-hmm. since, since it's not uh, STD for us, um, so this is uh, from Wendy Uyid the Observer. She says, "Space Man is a phase. Uh, Space Man is a fascinatingly odd premise let down by its drab, disputed, inert execution." And this next one, Stephanie Zachary, in Time Magazine. She just loose off from her promising premise only to walk out the orbit in the finish, but even so, it's satisfying to watch these actors at work fully committed to the strange, alienating world their characters are stuck in. I think that's a good way to put it. I mean, but, yeah, Space Man is on. That's a good way. It's the number one uh, movie on Netflix, and if I'm, if I'm with the Blue Rodgers Mail, the number one streaming movie right now in the, on the planet. And so, yeah, that's it. It is the number one streaming movie on the planet. Yeah. So uh, that's it. That's uh, that's Spaceman on Netflix, and you guys can watch it now. Spaceman on Netflix. It, a lot of people think it on Netflix, but uh, not you and I, because we're we're we're, in the, we're Netflix fan boys. So, are you ready for, uh, you ready for news? Are you gonna uh, I'm gonna have to buy Netflix soon. Oh, who they did that whole password block oh, thing yeah. now. Who is who's who are you using? And WWE is going. And WWE is going to be starting oh, in January. You can't wait. I'm sure Netflix. Now. All right, you ready? Uh, whatever. This is the movies that don't suck. It's some of them news. Me and Chris, I'm going to read stuff to Chris because he's been in another part in the different countries for so long, he has no idea what's going on in the good old USA. It's, it's good to be back, man. I, I like New Zealand, but it's always something nice to be home. So, uh, Neil, what's the first thing you're going to tell uh, me? It's always great to travel, but it's always great to be home. I, I agree with yeah. you. Uh, first, let's get the sadness out of the way. I'm, I, I just want to get the sadness done mm-hmm. and over with. Let's talk about the first two sadnesses. One, let's talk about the one that uh, only people in my world carry about, uh, probably not people in the real world carry about, and that is uh, pro wrestler uh, Virgil passed away while you're gone. Now, if you don't know who pro wrestler Virgil is, this is pro wrestler Virgil. He was part of the NWO in the nineties. He was part, uh, he was a million dollar champion, the second million dollar champion only to Ted DiBiase. He used to be Ted DiBiase's man servant. His name is Michael Jones. He is one of the best known little characters in the entire world, uh, of pro wrestling for everything he did. Um, he kind of he kind of snuck some money out of people a lot, <laughs> and so, like he he did he did scam people. He'd tell people that him and Ted DiBiase would come to signing or coming to signings, mm. and then he'd get there and be like, "Oh man, Ted backed out, man. Sorry, excuse me." And no, Ted was never coming. <laughs> Ted was never coming. But uh, he passed away, and then stand-up comedian and legend, um, and, I mean, in a ton of movies, too, Mr. Richard Lewis passed away this year, um, uh, this past week at the age of 76 on February 27th. So since you were gone, uh, he was on Curb Your Enthusiasm, BoJack Horseman, um, Robin Hood, Minutes Robin Hood Minutes Minutes Minutes. Minutes. Huh? Yeah, I'll see him in the text. Uh, yeah, I got it all, man. I know I know what I got. Okay. I was waiting to say it so I could put the picture. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh so I'm so we're sorry for the family and their losses. Uh great talents. Go look up any Richard Lewis stuff. Uh tomorrow, go look up Virgil stuff. You like pro wrestling. Seriously, um, it's always sad to hear about someone's passing. It just reminds you we're all here for just a short time and just uh, enjoy every moment you have. So Richard Lewis says he originated the term like 
stuff from hell, like day from hell or, you know, ride from hell. It's like, you know, the day from hell. He says he doesn't want to originate that. And then someone else says they did it, but it's still good. Uh, rest in peace, Richard. Woo woo. All right, let's move along. Yeah. Do you know who Josh Grode is? Josh Grode? No, he's the CEO of Legendary Films. Okay. Guess what? He is already giving the green light for. What's that? Dune 3, buddy. Three. He's saying, you know what? We've already made the money back for <laughs> Dune 2. We've already done it. They did like a hundred million. You know, they made more money in this weekend than any movie has the entire year. I'm glad to hear that. It's because it's, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about it. We'll We'll talk here in a second, but uh, Dune 2 has already made more money. The only, you know what the second highest movie the entire year is right now? It is, right? It's Heroes, isn't it? It's got to be the Taylor Swift movie, right? No, what is it? Beekeeper. Oh, okay. (laughs) Beekeeper. They made as much as Beekeeper has its entire run in one weekend. Uh, yeah. And Beekeeper is the number one movie of the 2024 until then. <laughs> um, all right. Kevin Spacey is returning to the main films. He's going to be playing a villain. He's going to star as the devil in the thriller called The Contract, inspired by Angel Heart and the Devil's Advocate. The Contract will star David uh, Kevin Spacey as Lucifer. That makes sense. <laughs> he's playing hey man. man I mean if you're gonna if you're gonna come back after everything that happened yep with this character you gotta, <laughs> might as well might as well get a character everybody's gonna be all about and yeah. be like yeah that makes sense <laughs> that makes sense can't believe they did that uh, he can't come back king you know I mean who's in the mm, whatever who knows who knows uh, Tom Hardy in the latest, fo- in the last set photo of Venom Three, uh-huh. has him dressed in the exact same clothes as he was in in the post-credit scenes of Venom Two, which shows that we are probably getting Spider-Man in the Venom Three movie. That's crazy. I mean, like, like uh, that's crazy. Yes, that that was all just stuff. Uh, also, another thing that was just rumored and people were like, ha ha, I'd love to do that, is also happening. Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis are reuniting for Freaky Friday, the sequel. Is it going on Strand Disney Plus, though? It's got to. Huh? Is it going on Strand to Disney Plus? Uh, who knows? Who cares? <laughs> it's Jamie Lee Curtis, dude. She could be in the theater. Yeah. I'm just, in the theater. All right, I'm just like, you know, Disney is trying to bring everyone to the other platform. I don't know. Uh, John Wick TV series now in the works. Mm-hmm. Yes, a new John Wick TV series ever since the hit of the Continental on Peacock. Uh, the John Wick universe is expanding with a TV series, anime, and a new movie, all based off of the ballerina starring Anna D. Um, but that was pushed off to 2025, wasn't it? Like, it was just going on this summer, and they... Pushed it off. I don't know why, but... Yep. Yeah. Well, they're all working on all that right now. Uh, Disney, the Stone in the... Uh, the Sword in the Stone live action remake uh, has been basically considered dead in the water. Uh, they, because need nobody wants, they need to stop doing this. Nope. Nobody wants to direct it. <laughs> nobody <laughs> wants to direct it. And they're like, okay... Guess nobody ever wants to direct it. Uh, Michael Flanagan wants to, you guys all to know that he is going to be doing a faithful adaptation of Stephen King's The Dark Tower series. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, mm-hmm. I read them all, and I'm just, scared. Yeah. I'm scared. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Michael Flanagan aims to finally bring the fans the faithful habitation of Dark Tower they've all been waiting for. The ambitious products involves a forest scene that makes someone again cry, showcasing his dedication. The Dark Tower may finally get the epic habitation that it deserves, and it does. It should be a series, just like the books. It needs to be a series. It, you can't you can't just fucking do that in one movie. No, 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 no you close. No, you close. You need, like, like 20 movies. Or maybe a long-ass TV show, so... Uh, Will Forte says Warner Brothers are full of shit and they're assholes because <laughs> they have deleted Coyote versus Acme and he's seen it and he goes and it was a really funny good movie. Mm. So Warner Brothers, I guess you just want to delete all the things everybody likes. 
Um, Austin Butler has been seen in gun training, and people don't know if it's because he got signed to the John Wick spinoff or if he's got signed to the Heat 2 movie. Or he, he just likes shooting guns. <laughs> That's nope, a, this is this is um, acting training. Okay. This ain't this ain't um Alright, fair enough. Well, he too would be great to see. Any of those movies would be great I to know. see. Yeah. Um all right, where are we at? Where are we at? All right, so Kick Ass Reboot is happening, and it is not gonna be called Kick Ass. The name is now gonna be titled, and it's by Matthew Vaughn. It is gonna be called The Stunt Man. Okay. Oh, and it'll be part of a trilogy, which is now in production. The first part of the trilogy, School Fight, already wrapped a couple of years ago. So it's going to be School Fight, The Stunt Man, and they don't have the last name. I don't think we need to reboot. That first kick ass is so good. I know, but, you know, um, I mean, why we're here, let's talk about it. While we're talking about remakes, let's talk about the remake that everybody seems to be pissed off about already. And me being one of the hugest fans of this franchise ever. Because guess what? I read comic books before a fucking movie ever came out. Do you have a picture? Let's of talk it? about yeah. Yeah. the crow. Vanity Fair put out pictures of Bill Skarsgård as the gothic rocker, uh, Eric Draven, which he was a gothic rocker in the movie and the video and the, and the comic book and all that stuff. There he is there. There he is talking to Shelly around a fire. Like, look, guys, look at this. All right. One. It's just a picture. We don't know what the movie's like yet. Yeah, people we were shitting on this. So like. Like, there's, people were saying, how much does connect to this character? Really? Like, like, like there are people with it. Uh, I just... I've met James O'Barr. I have had conversations with James O'Barr. He's, and if you're listening to this, if you're listening to this podcast right now and you don't know who James O'Barr is, then fuck you. You can't can calm, sit there and down. talk about the talk down. about the crow like you do. Okay. James O'Barr is the creator and the mind behind the crow. He created all its enter all its intelligent property. He is the owner of the crow. He had to give his green light for this movie to happen. And I'm sorry, I met James O'Barr. He doesn't even have, he doesn't carry smartphones. He only carries a flip phone. The guy's an artist that lives in the fucking woods that creates his art for him. Yeah, he's a, and he's a intense fellow. He's intense too. Very intense. And if James says this is okay, guess what? It's okay. It's okay because it's his art. It's his creation. Just because, and believe me, by any means, I'm not dissing Brandon Lee and how he passed away. I think it sucks. I think it's one of the worst things that ever happened in cinema. But guess what? Because George Reeves died didn't mean Chris Reeves can't be Superman. Because Adam West dies doesn't mean Robert Pattinson can't be Batman. You know? Like, yeah. seriously, guys, you can't sit there and just hold the standards of one actor to the next one for the same character. Uh, if I remember correctly, didn't Randy's uh, Randy's Lee's widow? Didn't she? Didn't she uh, say that? Was, like she's looking forward to this. Like, didn't she get the yeah, book? yeah. Dude. Like guys, dude, you can't do that. You can't sit there and be like, "Hey, I get to bash on it because somebody I liked in that movie died." Great, go bash on Wizard of Oz. Half that crew died during mm-hmm. the freaking movie. You know, like so. so we're, yeah, guys, if, I, I'm with Neil on this one. Let's, let's see if it criticism until it comes out. Yeah, Honestly. if it comes out and it sucks, guess what? I'm on the bandwagon with you. I'll tell you how much I think it sucks. Mm-hmm. But in, just because we saw some pictures and the guy has tattoos on, he looks exactly like every gothic rock rapper <laughs> guy that I hang out with. And I hang out with a lot because I work in fucking radio. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. But anyway, let's move on to that. And let's go to the next thing that has been revealed this week. Chris, did you know? The Superman logo was revealed. No. What does it look like? The Superman logo. And if you notice, there's snow on his chest. So he's going to be the Fortress of Solitude or whatever, right? You are 100%. There's another picture of, of the Fortress of Solitude out in the middle of the good old frozen tundra. And so, therefore, that's a thing. 
Um, so <laughs> everybody's like, oh, we're going here. And it's like, well, yeah, what, where would you think we were going? Right. And people are just weird. Yeah. I, I don't even know. I can't even trust people anymore. Some people I just want to kill. I want to smack yeah, well, them. I want to just yeah. kick them. Well, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Uh, Tron 3 is on its way. Okay. Um, it's already starting getting shot. They're already taking photos and stuff like that. In fact, here's a picture of one of the Tron people. The idea of the story. <laughs> That's your uh, yeah, litter. Right? Like, <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But that, that next to him is one of the first um, pictures we have. Now, Tron Ares will be following a highly... Um, uh, sophisticated program, Ares, who is sent from the digital world into the real world on a dangerous mission, marking humankind's first encounter with AI beings. Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like, yeah, okay. Well, I, I haven't, I haven't seen Tron Legacy. Maybe I should go back. <laughs> you should definitely go touch yourself in an ungodly I might, way. I might. I might do that. Um, board. Uh, it looks like Chronicles of Narnia is going to be a lot bigger than what we thought. She's going hardcore. Greta, Greta, uh, uh, Greta Gerwig is going insane with it. Uh, Naruto is getting a live action N- version. Naruto, you mean? Naruto, sorry, <laughs> Naruto. Yeah, oh, it's because of One Piece got so much of a popular. Yeah. I mean, One Piece is good. I, I've never even seen the anime, and I went and watched the anime after, yeah. or some of the anime, uh, after I watched the series. That yeah. is fucking good. The um, first come-ins for Gladiator, the first viewings of the Gladiator footage was saw, and the um, production company and studio loved it so much. They're like, hey, you know what? We like that. We're going to take your budget from 165 million to 310 million. Jesus now. Christ. Man, I, I think it was going budget over budget anyway from her quickly. Like like that's a lot. I mean, I'm excited for it. Who's not excited to see Gladiator like too, you know? Right? Yeah, I'm excited for it. Let's bring it. Um the great uh Dan, well gosh, dang it. What the heck is going on on my computer? I'm sorry. I'll hit you with that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to hit you in the head later. I'll, it'll be okay. Uh, the great, where's that? Oh, I lost everything because it did stupid stuff. Uh, Dan Harmon confirms that the movie has been written and it is in pre-production at this moment. That's right. Community, the film is 100% on track to be on its way. I know you'd be proud about that one. Yeah, so I'm very excited I for that. Yeah. Can't wait to see it. Um, now here's some sad news. Uh, Hannah Gertz. Uh, Gertie Reed uh, was found guilty uh, today for involuntary manslaughter. Mm. She was the cinematographer on, or not the cinematographer, the she armor. was one of the, the, armor. the armor on Rust, the movie with Alec Baldwin. Now, Alec Baldwin doesn't face the people until July 17th, but there's video that comes out that came out where Baldwin was telling people to rush and do a, so they could do a bunch of reshoots or a bunch of not reshoots, but a bunch of takes over and over and over and over and over again. So I have a friend, who, I'm a, I'm I'm a friend who's convinced he's going to go to jail, by the way. It's in the telephone. He's going to go to jail. But we'll I think he might go to jail too. Yeah. Um, Oh, the uh, director for Dune 2. What's his name? Say it correctly. I know it's Dennis. Denis Villeneuve. Thank you. He made sure a, a, di- a dying fan's wish was fulfilled and made it to his house with a, his personal laptop to watch Dune to Part 2 with him before he passed away. Yeah, it's like, That's it's, awesome. it's like that movie Fanboys. You remember that movie? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Um, all right, then we got Michael Keaton uh, has just seen Beetlejuice 2 himself and said, oh, my God, I didn't realize we made that good of a fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> he was very, I don't know, I don't know. We're having fun filming it. I don't know. But he, his quote is exactly, I didn't know we made that good of a movie. Yeah, it's come, it comes out uh, again this year, September 6th, if you guys don't know. So we're excited. Everyone's excited. And, uh, yeah, 
And uh, let's see, uh, Late Night with the Devil, uh, Stephen King short story mm -hmm. has been changed into a movie that's going to be coming out at the end of March. And uh, yeah, we're definitely going to go see this one. It's by Shudder, and it has, uh, gosh dang, I can never pronounce this right, uh, Polka Dots from Suicide Squad, David, uh, David Gosmala. That's the small Yeah, Marshall is. <laughs> yeah, I saw the trailer today, and it's like the late night host is trying to talk to the devil, uh -huh. like through different ways, yeah. like throughout. This like, kind of Shutter. It's it's produced by Shutter, but it will be hitting the movie theaters okay. uh, late this March. Okay, but um, it was the date. I saw it earlier, and then I totally lost it. I don't see a number. Yeah, uh, 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 March twenty second. March twenty okay. second. And when the when okay, March twenty second. So wait, like we did this month. <laughs> yep. All right. Cool. Dwayne the Rock Johnson, besides being at WrestleMania forty, where I'll be, yeah. um, is making. He wants to make films that matter, and he is going to be producing a biopic on probably the most famous pro wrestler of all time, Hogan. Hulk Hogan. So the most re popular wrestler of all Andre time, the Giant. not Hogan, not Andre the Giant. Okay, who's the it's not him? It's just dude. But I figured about him, is he? Of no. Okay. Um, more popular, the most popular, more popular wrestler of just a wrestler. Never been in movies. Never been in shows. It's not Hulk. It's and not everybody, everybody in the entire world. Knows his catchphrase. Is, it, is he still alive? Is he still alive? Yes. Surprisingly. <laughs> uh, tell me who he is. Woo! Oh, okay. I think I, okay. Yeah. Rick Flair is getting the bio treatment from Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Who's going to play Rick Flair? How's Rick, who's who knows yet? He, he, he's, he's just, it's, it's in the works, but who, <laughs> who do you think? Who, should, who do you think? Who do you want? I don't know, man. I don't know who played Rick Flair. They could get that guy who did that and call. He's pretty good. <laughs> you know? That's true. That is kind of good. And last, but not least, just because I thought this was hilarious. I don't know if you heard about this, but this is hilarious. I can't wait to see this. All right. So, Chris, while you were away on another part of the planet, mm -hmm. this little group of people, uh, what part of the world was it? I think it was in New Jersey or it was in California. It was on the East Coast or West Zone. But um, what happened was, no, no, Glasgow, Scotland. My bad. Okay. And Glasgow, Scotland. Sorry, sorry. I I, I thought I knew it was somewhere yeah, yeah. away from me. <laughs> um, a person called a place called House of Illuminate uh, Illuminati. Mm -hmm put together a little factory where you could go walk through that you would pay 35 pounds or around $44 to go walk through. And it was supposed to be like, you're walking through Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this? Uh, yes. I've seen it. I actually saw it while I was in the, have you seen the pictures and everything? I just saw one picture. just the one picture of the, um, right. <laughs> what, what picture? Just a picture of the, the two of us standing. Oh, what did you see the picture of? I just love the picture of the two of us standing together. Ah, uh, yeah. So, it's just like, man. Well, one of the items, one of the people in the uh, ride, which was, okay, so so you people know, uh, they, they said it was Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. You went in, and it looked nothing like the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> looked nothing like, it was just badly made, very poorly done. And this character that busted out on this video that you can go watch somewhere on uh, TikTok, you, you know, YouTube, yeah. wherever you, you see your little videos. Um, a character known as The Unknown popped out and scared kids. Now there is a movie in the works of this character known as <laughs> The Unknown aiming for a 2024 release. That's crazy. It's like, why would they do that? <laughs> it's crazy as hell. It's crazy as hell. Why Why would you? What's The Unknown? What's The Unknown? Well, we don't know. So that's what's called The Unknown. Oh, and last but not least, 
Uh, I know I said that for that, but I forgot about this one. <laughs> Ghostbusters, the Frozen Empire, are releasing popcorn boxes, and these you cannot fuck. Um, good, good, good. It's good. Enough. So let's take a look. We get the Slimer one for Cinemark. Mm-hmm. Look at that one. That's that cool. was cool. Yeah. That's really cool. But this is the one I want. And if anybody can get it before, I, I, I'm i sure I can get it. I think it's the AMC one. I do. I'm getting that 100%. Easy. Uh, it, it's it's one of the ghost traps. I got to get so it. So the ghost traps are available. Everybody, that's the news. Chris, let's talk about the most popular movie of 2024. That was the movies don't suck in some news. I read a bunch of stuff to Chris, and he's okay with it because he has nothing to do except for masturbating to Cinemax that's not even unlocked. All right, guys. Uh, this is a movie that... Uh... Oh, you know what? You know what? Before I even start, you know what I totally forgot to talk about, too? What's that? Did you know Jake Paul is going to fight, uh, is bringing Iron Mike Tyson out of retirement? He's going to fight him? Yeah, for it, real. They was just Mike Tyson's going to fuck him up. Oh, easy. Uh, yeah, dude, dude, there's a picture of it. Here, one second. Like, they, they did a press conference. There it is. <laughs> ah, it's yeah. Glass Joe. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Right. So, um, this is, a, we're talking about Dune Part 2, um, directed by Denis Villeneuve. You guys don't know who he directed? What the fuck have you been watching? Uh, he directed Prisoners, Blade Runner 2049, Incendies, Arrival, uh, Sicario. Uh, all kinds of shit. He's he's a great director. He's probably my favorite working director right now. And he uh, directed the original Dune. This is talking about Dune Part Two, starring uh, Tim Tim Tim. How was it? Was it say Tim 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 Wait, this one's good. Some suggest that Parker's powers include the male spider's ability to hypnotize females. Also, Rebecca Rebecca Ferguson plays Paul's father, Jessica. I step onto that stage. Also, Javier Bardem plays Stigar. But I didn't die. Josh Brolin plays Gurney Hollock. Yeah, something like that. Austin Butler plays Fade Rathua. You... Blood sucking old vampire. Uh, Florence Pugh plays Princess Ruin. Hi. Uh, Dubutista plays Beast Raban. So you're a pet. Uh, this also stars Christopher Walken as the Emperor. Okie dokie on a chalky, first of all. <laughs> um, also, this also leads to do is Lady Margaret Finring. Stellan Starsgard, representing his role, is Brandon Harkonnen. Uh, Charlotte Lampin plays Mother Mother Maham. I need to tell you shows at some point. Neil, why don't you go ahead and read the storyline for Doom Part 2? Dude, before I re- read the story about Doom Part 2, I just want to say, uh, like, right now, I see somebody in our chat room that I have not talked to or seen in, like, a decade. That is Nathan. Remember the band Stoned I told you about? One of the bands that I hung out with back yeah, in, really. like, one of my early 20s? Yeah, he was in yeah, that. This is a dude that I, I, like, went up and down the roads with for a couple of So, Nathan, if you're listening, man, love you to death. Glad you're listening, bro. Um, you can listen to all our episodes on all the other places too. Mm-hmm. But anyway, all right, now um, reintroduce us, and you can edit it later. I'm sorry. No, uh, what's the storyline for Dune Part Two? Dune Part Two. Yes, let's see here if I can get it without all the advertisements all over it. You know, I hate that when that happens. Anyway, Paul Atreus unites with China and the Freemen while on the warpath of revenge against the conspirators who destroyed his family. Facing a choice between the love of his life and the fate of the known universe, he endeavors to prevent a terrible future only he can foresee. So the thing I love about uh, Denis Villeneuve is that he makes smart movies and doesn't fit, but uh, for mass audience. Um, I I think by the way I mentioned Doom Part Two, I fucking love this thing. This movie's amazing. It's the best movie I've seen this year. Easy. Uh, it's better, easily better than the first one. And it is, it is, it's incredible. <laughs> this movie's amazing. Uh, there's nothing, right. uh, nothing I don't like about this movie. Uh, it's, it's got everything I liked about the first one and, and more. It's got action. It's got it's suspense. It's got, it's got uh, heartbreak to all of the stuff you want from it. And it's amazing. Uh, 
I, 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 I was still trying to collect my thoughts about how much is new. What did you think of Dune Part 2? Man. All right. So there is some stuff that happened in it. Yeah, yeah. And that was good. And then other stuff came in. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So I'm one of those people that I, uh, when I see a movie or, or anything, I go as that's that person's interpretation yeah, yeah. of right. the source material. Yeah. Well, you and I are both the same way. Like, Peter, like uh, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Is it to the book? Is it exact? Are there characters missing? Is there things going on in those that makes no sense why he took out? Yes. But are those movies some of the greatest movies of all time? Yes. yes. Doom Part 2. This is... movie is exactly that. Yeah. It's, this, a, it's incredible. There's things that are taken out. There's things that are different than the book. But the interpretation of how he interpreted, how how this was put onto the screen, this is by far, and I am going to say this right now, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you can hold me to this, January 2025, and I'm still alive, bro. You can hold me this right now. It is going to take a lot, and I mean a fucking lot, to make this not the number one movie I've seen all year. It's it's uh, it's incredible. We have this uh, a visionary director, and a lot of times you be, you think this visionary director, and they don't want to put in these IP, but they got this guy, and he. He loves the Dune movies. He's a, he's a fan of Dune itself. And when he comes out and does his own interpretation that's as gorgeous as Z2 movies together, I I can't, I couldn't be happier. Like, Dune 2 Part 2 is fucking incredible. It's the best movie I've seen this year. I Like I said, I don't know how it's going to, I don't know anything that knocks off the top of it because it's everything I want it to be. Everything I want it to be. Yeah. Um, the acting was 100%. Uh-huh. Um, I love how characters that like in the first one, mm-hmm. um, and I like it because if you go watch interviews with him too, he's like, "No, I, I, I have a vision for all the entire yeah. story." Yeah, yeah. And this ain't done yet. Yeah, this yeah. ain't done yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, um, just like Dune One, they didn't have the green light for Dune Two yet, guys. Like when Dune One came out, just like now, they don't have the green light for Dune Three. I think they just now got the green light. Yeah, yeah. But like literally. They didn't have the green light for Dune 3, but he wrote it like he had the green light for Dune 3. Apparently, like this he, is what happened. Uh, I heard about this. Is that um, Denis walked into a hand, Hans in her office, just handed him uh, Dune Messiah and walked out. He didn't say anything. He just handed it to him. He's basically like, get to work on the on the store, score for that. There was really to the score of this movie, which is incredible. Hans Zimmer did an amazing job. Uh, the sound design, everything about this movie being brought to life. It's just so gorgeous. It's so good. It's not just gorgeous. The story, just like, it goes just like it continues. Because this is supposed to be like a year after. I mean, in the book, it's like two years, three years. But like, but uh, in in the movie, it's like a year after. And it goes right from the the story that we got in the book, in the first one, right into the second. Because I went, I watched Dune 1 right before I went and saw Dune I did too, I did too, I did too. I I mean, I'm not dumb. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I watched Dune, and then I watched Dune Part 1. Yeah, yeah. uh, You know, but, but, um, I love this movie. The acting in this movie was ridiculous. Um, everybody knew their part and knew exactly what their part was supposed to be. There's characters in this movie that just blew it like, okay, now. Uh, you want to know awesome about this character? You want to know what Rathua, how terrifying he is? <laughs> what's that? You want to know about Austin Butler's character, Fade Rathua, like how terrifying that character is? Right. <laughs> like there's so many different like things. Okay, so like here, let's a good example. Let, let's do a good example. Okay. All right. So I love the original Dune. I mean, it's a classic cheesy sci-fi so the one 1980s. Yeah. Don't intrude. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's it's a great. It's a classic. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But here we go. This is this is my example. This is a character from Dune, the original. That Sting. That right? Sting. Yep, that Sting. Not not Sting from wrestling. Not it's Sting. Not that Sting. It's Sting. You know, like Roxanne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roxanne, yeah, yeah. you the, the black light. Yeah. You know who that same character is in this movie? Who's that? Oh, really? <laughs> same character, bro. Oh, but uh, look how 
But then you get more of the lore and you understand more of the lore. Yeah. Like you understand um, the new movies, you understand the lore. You understand the reasoning behind stuff because his brother in the movie is this, and they're both the sons of. Oh, I didn't, I didn't put them anywhere, but like behind us, the only one it is behind us. But and their dad is that, okay. you know, <laughs> like the Baron. Yeah, and like this movie to me is just it's ridiculous. smart, but it's for the masses, and that's what I love about it. Like it's it's a gorgeous movie. It's artistic. Um, I I love this movie. I love Dune Part Two. <laughs> And I couldn't have been happier. Well, yeah, I remember uh, I looked to my friend to my right, to my right, and I looked to my wife and my friend. And I go, that was dope because it totally was. <laughs> this was dude. Dope is the understatement. <laughs> that movie. All right, the acting was great. The storyline went perfect. Um, yeah, it is a little much. I mean, there's a lot of information to take in when it comes to like a sci-fi movie, where you're like. Huh? But by the end of the movie, you get explained so well who who is what and what what's where and why this person's doing that. So if you just follow it and you just keep it going until the end, you might be lost for a second. But by any means, you're not going to be lost to the point where you can't come back from it. If you're a fucker, you know also like, the people you, out there that, that just hate this just it exists, and you go fuck yourself. Like this is way better than you think it's supposed to be. <laughs> no, and, and um, and it's just hilarious, uh, because I mean, there's people that are like, this is better than Star Wars and blah 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 and, and stuff like that, and it's like, you know, I get your point on that, but it's just different, and yeah. both of them are, both of them, and to be honest, Star Wars stole from the Dune books. That's <laughs> where. Yeah. Well, why do you think? Why do you think Luke Skywalker started on a? Sand planet called Tatooine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, look at it, like look, it doesn't that look just like Star Wars? Yeah, it does. I mean, the thing you, know, you want to fuck up so Oh, wait a minute. No, that's a porn <laughs> that's a porn bucket. There. Yeah. But Tatooine, you know, like <laughs> dude, everything about this movie just like knocked it out of the fucking park, man. I, I don't know if I oh wrong thing. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen a movie that makes that made me this excited. Like it was just it came, this came um, out in March, dude. Like you're, yeah, it came out like no, it came out in fucking the end of February. And when movies aren't supposed to be this good, and it came out. No, 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 no. This is um, I mean. You, you got your backdrops that are great. You get your legendary story. You get the good guys versus the bad guys. You get um, a full circle on characters that even in the books didn't get their full circle. Mm -hmm. But he wrote it so those characters got their full circle in the second movie. Like, I really love uh, his, uh, what's the director's name again? Uh, Denny Villeneuve. Villeneuve. I really like Villeneuve's. Um, perspective of the Doom Galaxy. Oh yeah, yeah. Just, just the whole, the whole uh, world he, the world he built, which is a, a great world he built. I couldn't like this has everything I like about sci-fi films. In the right, way. and uh, I can't wait for the Doom Part Three because they're gonna have to do it right. Like it's been greenlit. I know that I know Denny wants to do it, and I, I, I wholeheartedly like support it one hundred percent. I can't wait to watch the third of this. If they're this good. You know, you get this visionary director. To yeah, do something I like mean, this. by any means, don't come out here and make the Hobbit trilogy. <laughs> I'm just saying. And don't let studios do that to you either. Don't let studios tell you to make three movies when it's two movies can do just fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. make the story you want to make, bro. Because guess what? It's working. Yeah. I like it. This guy likes it. And guess what? We're nerds. Yeah. <laughs> Can't tell. We're nerds. Yeah. We're geeky guys. Mm -hmm. Look at the nerdyisms all behind my ass. Look at that. Nerd. Nerd. Yeah. I mean, Chris has no nerdyisms whatsoever. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. It's cool as a cucumber. No, but, um... no, no. His, his entire house is yeah. nerdyisms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but seriously, uh, the directing of this film was great. The cinematography, um, the, the way that people, um, the acting, uh, Timothy, like, 
Austin Butler, man. I never thought I was going to ever forget him as Elvis Presley. Yeah, Austin Butler, yeah, yeah. Fuck, dude. Knocked it out of the park. I don't even fucking re- Elvis fucking who, man. Yeah, dude, I he, don't even remember that movie like, anymore. He was unrecognizable as his character, and he was great as, like, I want to say all the acting in this was great. Uh, all the worked 100%. I believed, uh, I believed Timothy, I believed Timothy, I believed, Timothy, I believed Zendaya, I believed Jessica Ferguson, I believed everybody in. Josh Brown, I believe everything. Batista, I believe the fuck out of Batista. Yeah, like, we're talking about uh, how he's just a he's just an, a straight fucking actor now. Like he's so good. Like he's he's not no he's not an action I, star. He's not a comedian. He's a fucking actor. He's so good at it. He's so good at it. I see with like wrestling things and stuff like that. When you don't make a lot of money doing things, mm-hmm. the thing you do is you go do autographs. Yeah. yeah. Because you know how much money a celebrity or a wrestler makes in one day doing autographs? What's that? So Planet Comic Con's coming up in Kansas City. Guys, if you don't know, that thing is fucking loaded with it's superstars. Stacked, it's stacked. It is stacked. So go go check that out. Uh, we're buddies with the people. Well, I'm, I don't know if you are, but I'm buddies with the guys that run that thing. I'm not. <laughs> but, um, but seriously... In a single day, an actor or a wrestler will make between fifteen to twenty five thousand dollars. I do that. I do that all day. Yeah, <laughs> and so De Batista doesn't have to. No, because he's... now he's at the point where I'm sure he's got enough money that I'm never going to see him for an autograph signing anywhere. <laughs> but if I ever do, I don't even think wrestling's the first thing I'm going to bring up to him now. Yeah, you, yeah you bring like, up, literally. You bring up at a... this point. At this point, I'm like, you're a good actor that somehow fell in a- fell into wrestling first. He's a, he's a fantastic actor, and I I love Dip Batista for doing the for doing this because I I want to see his him everywhere. You know, like, oh scar 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 scar. You know how many hours it took him to yeah. even um yeah, but, um did I no, did I put it on here? Yeah, I don't you, know if you I did. put that said, in. Yeah, eight hours to apply, two hours to remove it. <laughs> yeah, like it took so many hours for him to get in and out of that makeup, and he had to go through all the stuff just to. He didn't pee all the time, <laughs> the whole time. He didn't pee for like a, for a whole day, like every time he acted. But it was only ten days he had to do the yeah. whole. Okay, well that's good acting on that one. But um, Christopher Walken, right? right? I, Christopher Walken. I didn't even know that Christopher Walken was in this movie, <laughs> but when he got in there. You know, like yeah. it was just like, what the hell? Like, um, and again, like, um, all right. So Zendaya in the first one was introduced. She didn't have much, mm-hmm. but in this one, Zendaya, awesome, killed it. Fully fleshed out character. Fully fleshed out character. Yeah, fully fleshed out character. Now, at the end of the movie, we get kind of introduced to another character that is played by Florence Pugh. Mm-hmm. Again, she was just kind of introduced, and she's there. Oh, well, you probably, know why? Because well, who should be in the third one all the time? Because in the third one, <laughs> she's a major part of that. Yeah, we don't give anything away, guys. We don't want to talk too much about I, it. I don't want to talk more of that. I don't want to. That's that's my, I guess, biggest part of my spoiler kind of thing. I I, I don't know what more to say than that. That uh, beautifully, this is done. I saw it in IMAX, which was exactly mm. the way to see this fucking movie. Mm. Um, but the thing is, unlike other movies I've seen in IMAX that were made for IMAX, this one, I can't wait till it comes home because I'm watching it one and two right off the bat because there's other movies I've seen in IMAX. It's like, this is a beautiful movie in IMAX. But as soon as you took it home to see it, it's like, oh, Avatar. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Exactly. But seriously, guys, um, Chris, w- w- uh, do you want me to get my score first? Or yeah, do you, you want do to get score it? first. Yeah. Um, four point nine. I'm with you, one hundred percent. I'm with you, four point nine. This is incredible. I want to give it a five, but what if something else comes yeah, out yeah. this year? <laughs> I got to justify that yeah. being better than yeah. this. It's zero point nine. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite movies. I think I've seen this made me feel like the time I first saw Star Wars. <laughs> it's an incredible movie. Well, that's exactly it. it. This series is 
this 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 generation style. Does everything else feel so small after this? Like like the movies we have to do next week. Like after the seeing- only movie I can think of that's going to come near this is Deadpool <laughs> yeah. and Wolverine. Yeah. Like literally, that's that's why I'm kind of throwing it off because if Deadpool and Wolverine make me feel better than this movie, <laughs> then that's the only thing I'm going to be able to save it for. Yeah. Besides that, I know what's coming up this year. I yeah. look. I me and Chris look constantly. Yeah. We figure out what's coming up uh, to the movie theater all the time. Mm-hmm. Like we uh, last, last year, yeah. I think last year we had to. We almost had to like set it up for like the next nine weeks. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, we but so next week, I think next week we're doing imaginary. Right. That's a new, that's a movie you did uh, that uh yeah imaginary things at Bloomhouse film about that basically making movie with the teddy bear called imaginary. You know what's about? I'll show you. Um, Are, have you been drinking again? No, no, no. Oh, by the way, I'm on Timmy's.com. What is the audience score for, for Dune? Two, four, two. Um, has to be a 93%. 95%. Damn it! All right, what is the crazy score for Dune? Why can't I get it right on the mark anymore? Uh, um, 89%. 94%. Fresh. Damn it! I thought the critics yeah. were gonna be assholes about so, it. They say, and oh, a mat. Yeah, okay. Anyway, continue. Visually stunning and narratively epic, Doom Part Two continues Denis Denis Villeneuve's adaptation of the beloved sci-fi series in spectacular form. A bad review and a good review. This is from uh, Sarah Michelle Fetters of MovieFreak.com. She says the film is all exhilarating, built up leading to unsatisfactory and even somewhat perfunctory payoff. Fuck you. And this is from Matt. Commode Kermo- of Commode Mayo's takeout. He says, What's really pleasant about part two, despite how complex and like in miasma the plot becomes, storytelling is so clear. I'm going to read another good one <laughs> because I, I want <laughs> to. So, when Chris Hewitt, <laughs> then I'll just start driving. He says, As in all these sci fi books, there are plenty of scenes which computer generated characters drive computer generated vehicles past computer generated backups. So, in Dune, the deal is human, slightly messy, and organic. Uh, yeah, this is incredible movie. This is the best movie yeah. I've seen this year, and I—I I mean, I—I—I I, I, I don't know what's gonna beat this if anyone, anything can, honestly. Oh man, dude, I do. Look, what's it? What is I, it? I, I just saw what, what can beat it. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Labyrinth just came out back <laughs> to the theater. <laughs> I saw my baby that cry piece, crying man. hard that cry as piece. babe could cry. What do I do? My baby's love has gone. So uh, next, it said, my baby blue. Nobody knew. So uh, the only thing that will be coming up next week is or this Friday is imaginary that blue mask film. About the haunted dog. Oh, dude, we're definitely yeah, we're definitely gonna okay. see Imaginary. Yes, if you don't know, it's about a girl that starts imagining uh, her best friend a teddy bear, uh, and it's a murder, murder. I know there's a movie that just came out on uh, platforms too that I was I yeah, saw, just, yeah, and I, I forgot to write it down, yeah, and I don't you, know what the hell it is. Once so. you find it out, <laughs> send it to me. We'll do that. We'll do that. Uh, so uh, you guys can find us online movies on site.net or w2mnet.com w number 2 m is in movies net you'll find us there along with a bunch of other really cool podcasts we're also on the Facebook uh, I said Facebook right Facebook yeah I did um, oh Facebook are you account. okay bro yeah Facebook account so she's on the podcast we're on Twitter NTS podcast run X NTS podcast I'm going to start posting on that coming up because Panic Fest is coming up and I have to live my I talk my time there uh, we're also on Patreon Patreon account so she's on suck we're on Bonfire, bonfire.com. So she moves on Sucks and something you'll find that shirts. All the bunch of cool stuff Neil's made. And we're, uh, where you find podcasts from who's on Sucks and something you Subscribe, be our friends. We'll love you. Uh, you're the best. You're the best. Neil, who, what do you do for small businesses? Hey, if you got a small business, let us know and we'll be more than happy to advertise it right here on. Movies don't suck and some do. We'll be more than happy to advertise you, your friends, your brothers, your cousins, your brothers. We'll do it right here free of charge just because we want to help out local people just like we helped out earlier. Tutu's Pizza Pie Shop. You good? You ready to get out here? Yeah, let's do it. Well, that's another episode of Movies Don't Suck and Some Do. My name's Neil. And I'm Chris. I remember, guys, when you're up in space and you got a spider talking to you while you're mentally just not there, remember, like the sands of time, 
These are the dunes of our life. Have a good night. <laughs>